What's going on friends? Harley Davidson is not exactly known for a brand new 45 degree air cooled V-twin every other year. It's more like 15 years in between engines. So with the direction the company is going today, will the Milwaukee 8 be the last stand for the air cooled 45 degree twin from Harley Davidson? It is a ever-changing world these days with emissions and noise regulations which are forcing air-cooled engines out of production little by little each and every year. We're seeing it right now with the Evo Sportster no longer being sold in Europe and here in the US. They've already dropped the Sportster line down to three models and they're not even calling it the Sportster anymore. Now naturally for the Sportster we expected to see an update to that engine after the Milwaukee 8 came out in 2017. Well, we got our updated Sportster, but it wasn't exactly what we were thinking, which a lot of the word on the street and a lot of the thought was going to be, hey, they're going to come out with a new four-valve, high-revving engine that's kind of based somewhat off the Milwaukee 8. Well, we finally did get an updated Sportster, but it wasn't exactly what we were thinking we were going to see. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. So rather than a four-valve, high-revving, air-cooled engine for a new Sportster motor, Harley-Davidson really did an about-face and went with a dual-overhead cam, liquid-cooled engine in the Revolution. Now, we know Harley-Davidson has been struggling for years trying to attract new riders, and the Sportster has always been the gateway to Harley-Davidson. They get you in the door, they get you on a Sportster, you ride it, you enjoy it, and then you get rid of it in a year or two, and you get on one of their big twins. Now guys, I really want your opinion on this. Do you feel like Harley-Davidson is signaling going forward in the future that they're going liquid-cooled? Maybe even dual overhead cam liquid-cooled across the lineup. Now we all know Harley-Davidson will run an engine platform until it is just impossible to produce it anymore. Now we saw this with the shovel head. Tightening emissions regulations, better calls for reliability, then there was the whole strike, and then the damn near bankruptcy, and oh yeah, that whole company buyback thing. So Harley-Davidson really, at that time, needed to reinvent itself, and the way they did that was they came out with the Evolution engine. Now, a lot of people will credit the Evolution engine with saving Harley-Davidson. Granted, with a little help from the government there, too. Now, the Evo engine came about to meet reliability that the customers wanted, and also to meet the emissions and noise regulations at the time. And the Evo had an excellent run from 1984 to 1999, and then we did have a couple of CBOs in there in 2000, 2001. But with the Evolution engine, it was solidly reliable. It is probably one of the best engines Harley-Davidson ever produced, but during, towards the end of its run, emissions regulations were tightening, noise regulations were tightening, so Harley once again had to come out with a new engine platform. And not only that, the Evo was really good at what it did and that was being reliable. But the other issue was the Evo, they just weren't able to get the power out of the Evo that people were looking for. So the twin cam replaces the Evo. Gone is the gear driven cam system because of the noise that it generated. And Harley Davidson goes with the dual cam design with the chain drive which solved the noise issue and also allowed that engine to be emissions compliant while making more power. And it is honestly likely that the twin cam would still be in production today if it hadn't got a little competition from Indian when they come out with their Thunderstroke 111. When they debuted that engine in 2013, I immediately started looking at Harley Davidson waiting for a new engine to come out. And once again with the twin cam, we knew over in Europe they weren't gonna be able to sell it in Europe so with the tightening emissions that were coming down the line, Harley-Davidson had to come out with a new engine. Now Harley-Davidson had quite a few challenges with the Milwaukee 8. They had to meet emissions regulations, keep the noise down on this engine, and still produce horsepower out of that old 45 degree air-cooled design. Now what Harley-Davidson did, they designed these engines to run on these lean air-fuel mixture ratios. They put two spark plugs per cylinder, four valve heads, this actually was able to meet emissions, plus adding oil coolers to all the bikes. They're able to run them just a bit leaner to squeak under those emissions, and also that dual plug setup really helped there as well. So once again, in addition to meeting those emissions requirements, Harley-Davidson also had to meet noise requirements. And that's why on the Milwaukee 8, the covers on the engine 
are actually designed to dampen sound. And unfortunately, this is also the reason why they went with a chain drive on that single cam design, rather than going back with a gear drive, which we all loved on the Evo. So, and even Harley Davidson claiming, okay, the engine, it's the mechanicals of the engine itself are quieter. They did claim to give us a little bit better exhaust note, but as we all know, the Milwaukee 8 just doesn't have that thump like we got from the twin cam, and definitely nothing like the carbureted bikes of the past. So now with Harley Davidson's introduction of the Revolution Max, and Indian already having a large displacement overhead cam liquid cool bagger in the Indian Challenger, are we going to see Harley Davidson do the same? So the big question is, is Harley Davidson going to continue development on air-cooled engines, or are they going to shift their focus into building liquid-cooled engines going forward in the future? Because a lot of air-cooled engines today, these are old designs. They've just been modernized a bit, put into some cleaner, updated chassis. But fortunately with Harley Davidson, if history has taught us anything, Harley is going to ride that air-cooled pony till hell won't have it anymore. But honestly, as much as I hate to see it, we're probably going to see liquid-cooled Harley-Davidsons creeping into the line. They've already started fresh with a brand new all-liquid-cooled Sportster line. So, in going forward, are we going to see liquid-cooled engines start creeping into this soft tail line? Maybe see a liquid-cooled bagger from Harley-Davidson pop up? There's a lot of questions there, but I think they can do it. I don't think they're just going to drop us cold turkey on these air-cooled motors. Where I think we're seeing the shift right now is Harley-Davidson doing away with the air-cooled Sportster line. They're moving them into liquid-cooled bikes. They're trying to bring new customers into the brand on these liquid-cooled motorcycles. And then as the customer base ages out, a lot of us that are riding these air-cooled V-twins, this is how the company is going to survive going forward, is by slowly working in liquid-cooled models into the lineup as basically emissions and noise regulations strangle out the air-cooled motors that we all love. There's even been a lot of talk, a lot of conversations I've had with you guys. Why didn't they just take the V-Rod motor and stick it in a bagger? Well, the V-Rod motor was a high-revving performance engine. It just didn't have the displacement or make the torque that you would really want in a bagger engine. You'd really want something large displacement like the Indian Challenger. Not only that, the V-Rod motor, and don't laugh at me for this, that is old technology. I know we're talking Harley Davidson here, but the V-Rod motor was actually really old technology even when it came out in 2002. The V-Rod motor was actually developed in the mid to late 80s for road racing, which didn't exactly happen until somewhere in the mid 90s, but that's a story for another video. So will we see an all new air-cooled engine platform from Harley Davidson in 15 years? With the tightening emissions regulations, they're just stomping out these air-cooled bikes left and right, and it's really sad, and I hate to see that. I do feel like I see the Milwaukee 8 being updated going forward the next few years, but 10 to 15 years, I'm hard-pressed to see a brand-new air-cooled engine from Harley-Davidson. So, unfortunately, water-cooled bikes are just a lot easier to make emissions compliant just due to the fact that they're able to maintain a temperature and they can run lean all day long, every day, no problem whatsoever. And when it comes to the air-cooled bikes, these things are already running lean. They're extremely hot. So we're doing the one thing that Big Brother doesn't want to see us doing, which is putting fuel in the bikes, which cools them off and also makes them run a heck of a lot better. Now, they just simply can't do that at the factory, and they're trying to wrench down on us as end users right now to where we can't even do that. Now, unless you got a carburetor, and that's one of the big benefits of the carburetor, you can do anything you want with a couple of adjustments. But hopefully, if Harley-Davidson has to commit to going completely water-cooled, they're not going to make these bikes look water-cooled. We saw this with the Nova Project. They put air-cooled cylinders, though the cylinders looked air-cooled on the bike, but they were going to put the radiator underneath the seat. I've got a whole video on the Nova Project. It's pretty crazy. They spent a lot of money on it for nothing, in my opinion. But even if we do have to go to a radiator, I really hope that Harley-Davidson still maintains the air-cooled cylinder fins, and they don't put that straight, just kind of generic-looking liquid-cooled cylinder hanging out there in the open. Now, granted, they can make it dress it up, make it look pretty good like Indian did, but it just wouldn't be Harley-Davidson without the fins. Now, granted, with the radiator, eh, that might be something we have to get used to seeing on the front of Harleys. Now, even if Harley-Davidson doesn't go 
with overhead cam design in a liquid cooled bike, a push rod engine can be done. And in fact, Kawasaki did it with the Vulcan 2000. That was a big monster tractor of a motor. That thing produced a pretty decent horsepower and torque. It was liquid cooled, it still looked air cooled, and it even had push rods. But fortunately for us, if you have zero interest in what Harley's gonna do with liquid cooling, or maybe if you're not even really interested in the Milwaukee 8, there are a metric butt ton of Evos and twin cams out there, not to mention even a few shovel heads. And for you guys, if you got some deep pockets and you really wanna go old school, you can still turn up a pan head, maybe even a knucklehead. But guys, legends never die. Harley's air-cooled V-twin is legendary, and there'll always be one out there you can find somewhere. Granted, it's gonna be used. You're gonna have to get a little dirty working on it, but that is the whole point of getting one of those old motors and doing it yourself and having something that you could ride and be proud of. So guys, I know this was a little bit different video this week. I normally don't do videos like this, but with Harley-Davidson coming out with the Sportster S, it's completely liquid cooled. There's new models to follow. I really got to thinking, are we gonna see a new air-cooled engine in 15 years? Or is this the last gasp for Harley's air-cooled engines with the Milwaukee 8? Well, only time will tell. Nobody can say for certain what the motor company is going to do other than the motor company. But as I mentioned, fortunately, there are used Harleys everywhere. The aftermarket is strong and plentiful with parts. So even if they're not making them anymore, there's always somebody cloning them off. Patents expire. We'll always have an air-cooled 45-degree V-twin as long as we're living and breathing, hopefully, unless they make us go all electric. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. But guys, until next week, please continue to drop your video suggestions. I try to read all your comments. It's very hard to respond to all of them, but I appreciate all of you guys that have been interacting with me on YouTube. But guys, until next week, please stay safe on the streets, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys in next week's video. Thanks for watching.